Vajrana, the son of Aniruddha, great grandson of Krishna. Because after Krishna's departure, he wanted to establish all the places of pastimes of Krishna. Knowing how rare is Krishna's appearance in this world, along with his whole abode, which is eternally existing, obviously, eternally existing, but it was manifest at that time. But later it may become unmanifest, therefore to keep it, that was. So he established several deities. These were principal deities, especially for Gaudiyas. But after some time, all these were lost. Sadalini Hamahata. By the influence of powerful time, they were all lost. And later, the, uh, the first disciples of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the six Goswamis, they were sent here. Vandavaniyam Vasakeli Vartam Kalena Luptam Vijashakti Mukta. He entrusted the six Goswamis with few instructions. Reveal all the places of pilgrimage within this holy abode of Brajamandal, establish temple and write books establishing the conclusion of Vedic literature and uh, finally exhibit through your own example and your writings what is actually Vaishnava uh, etiquette behavior, lifestyle, and attitude. Bhakti Vidya Purna Maharaj made a very interesting uh, statement once. He said, how do we decide what is Vaishnava etiquette? Well, was it an international conference held and said, we should follow the no. Panchanga, this is Ashtanga, this is exactly how. What is actually Vaishnava etiquette, behavior, lifestyle, attitude? <coughs> Who decides? This is it. He said, truly Vaishnava behavior is the behavior of, of behavior of living entities in the spiritual world. Their, their relationship with the Lord and their relationship with each other. <coughs> That's what Vaishnava behavior is all about. And all of that behavior, attitude, behavior, words, everything is motivated by only one thing. Love with the desire to, uh, to serve and to please the Lord and each other in relationship to the Lord. That's all the essence of Vaishnava behavior. But it is very difficult to understand. Therefore, the Lord, when He descends along with His intimate associates, their behavior with the Lord, their behavior with each other, if you understand, if you read them, if you meditate upon them, in different situations, how did they respond? And that's the question. Therefore, on their appearance and disappearance days, we try to remember their activities, the challenges that they face, the obstacles they had, the temptations they faced in their life, and how they responded to it. With, with different circumstances, with different people, different types of people, all varieties, full range, and with the Lord in any circumstance of life. And with things, how to deal with things. That's what the professional behavior is all about. So, uh, Rupa Goswami and others were entrusted with this uh, service. So Rupa Goswami came and he established many of the places of pilgrimage. But there was one thing that he could not because he had heard Radha moving the day, the principal deity of Vrindavan, he dominates Srimad Radha, Shri Govinda Devo, Prashthali, thinking, I am not able to do that. He was, he was just like we asked, he was fighting, uh, feeling dissatisfied. He said, I am not able to achieve the order of what my Lord has said. And with great 
despondency, practically lamenting, he sat on the banks of Yamuna. And he was just praying. You know, I, I, I want to just fulfill that. What an amazing thing if Rama Gold Day manifests, the whole world will come and take shelter of him here in Vrindavan. He is the main personality, Vrindavan personality of Vrindavan. And then a boy comes. Very sweet looking Rajasi boy. Generally they say, uh, when they go to the Saru Baba, they say, Baba, you seem to be very dejected. What's the matter? He said, No, this, this is the only thing in my heart. And I don't know what this boy will do, but still, I just he expressed. And the boy said, Well, I don't know about that, but I can tell you something. There is a cow that comes every day at noon. And right here there is a small hillock. On top of that, it goes and stands there. There is some ant hill and it right on top of that. It completely releases all its milk. <laughs> you should go there. Come on, take it. He was all excited, come down this day. And he brought him. He brought him there. And the cow came and he saw that. And he looked, the boy had disappeared. So he was when he went there to that spot and then he peeped inside. He just fainted. And after some time he came back to consciousness, he called all the village people. And they very carefully they removed all this covering, and right there was Dr. Gobind Day. It's a small hill. And the, the place where the temple is built is that spot where he was discovered. And then it was established there. And Rupaswami was so happy. And later, of course, uh, uh, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami had a disciple who was Raja Mansik. And he also facilitated constructing a huge, one of the largest temple in North India. At that time, it was constructed in the uh, 1570s, somewhere around that time. Uh, seven story. Building. And it was a beautiful structural, architectural marvel at that time. And then, uh, of course, today's situation, if you actually go there, it was dismantled by around 800 years later by Adam Jay or Wendy, for a huge structure of Wendy kind of dismantled. About three uh, floors are still, you see that huge structure that is there. And today, those deities, all these deities, during that time, 1670s, when there was an the attack on the smugglers, then uh, most of the deities were actually taken away <coughs> to Jaipur. So, Rana Govindji is in Jaipur, Rana Gopina is also there. And Radha Madan Mohan was there, but one of the daughters of the king of Jericho, she was so much attacked when she got married to the prince of Karoli, she wouldn't go. And then the king was really, have you not paid enough dowry? Father <laughs> <laughs> said, What is the problem? I said, No, how can I go without my worshipable Lord Madan Mohan? So the prince was asked, he was the, you have to construct a huge temple and then she will come along with her uh, worshipable Lord Raha Madan Mohan. And actually on a huge balance went Radha Madan Mohan and she went walking behind. And that beautiful temple was established there. Really served, all these three deities are literally served like kings. So much with love and devotion. More than the 
external paraphernalia, the devotion that these people have. Even I remember many years ago I had gone to Rafa Govind Day temple. Uh, this is 1989. As soon as I joined, as soon as I joined the temple in 89, my first set seva was to go to Jaipur and get the deity of Ganesh Ji to be installed on the door of our temple. So personally, Radhana Swami Maharaj wrote down all the original deities of the Nam that are there in Jaipur and he said, you must visit these deities. So I went there and uh, it was late, uh, I, in the evening I went, little late. So I found out their Mangalati. Ratha Govindji's Mangalati was at 4.50. Ratha Gopinath's Mangalati 4.30. So in 10 minutes, here and there, that's all. Rather, Damodars was 435, 440 or something. So I found out all the places and I stood there at Rather Govindji. I, I was told a lot of people come for Darshan. I stood there, not even one person was there. It was 410. No one. I was thinking, am I come to the right place? <laughs> And then suddenly, two minutes before, whoosh, people, only back, and I suddenly lost maybe hundreds of people. And now, uh, everyone was standing there. And suddenly it opened. Then, you get the benefit of seeing Krishna personally, face to face. 
So one time on Diwali day, first thing we went was to Karoli. We went to three hours drive. And Karoli Hogya, afternoon, we left from there, like a Jehu Karos. And then came the Radha Govind around 5 p.m. And we were waiting. Then the curtain opened. Then we sat up. Everyone, Radha Govind, finished before sunset. Actually, it was a Diwali day, same day, anniversary. So, Radha Govind Dev stands there being worshipped. And also, Radha Gopalam the temple, when as soon as this curtain opens, and have a Gopalam ji, you know, will reveal himself. There are three sets of deities here. The small one in front is Radha Gopalamanda, which is which was worshipped personally by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. And the slightly bigger deities, little medium-sized deities, that is Radha Minoji, that was uh, worshipped by Lokana Goswami. Lokana Goswami and Bhugara Goswami were people who came even before the six Goswamis because Lord Chaitanya appeared to these two personalities in their dream and guided them to go to Vrindavan and reveal all the places of Basta and Sphere. So even before Rupa and Sanatana came, these personalities were here and uh, uh, at Umra, Umra, that is a place near Chatravan and there is a Kishori Kund in that kul, Lokna Goswami uh, was revealed this Radha Minoji. And he would, I can't believe, he would put it around his neck and take him out of the day. He didn't have a temple. He would carry them on his, in his neck like that with a bag. And he would worship them and put them back, the bag and travel around like that. And this is the place where they are there. And then the bigger deities of Radha Krishna that are there. He is Radha Vijay Govinda, worshipped by Jaydev Parade Vidya Bhush, sorry, Parade Vidya Bhush, who wrote the commentary on the Vedanta Sutra, the Govinda, Govinda Bhash. So his deities are there. And then there is a small deity of Gauranga Mahaprabhu, which is personally worshipped by so those are the deities that are, and there is also uh, a small Radha Giridhar, a, a, a uh, Govardhan Shila, which is like a square, it's like chocolate. It's exactly this little site. Maybe if you ask, if you request, maybe that Pujari may show. This was personally held by Lord Chaitanya in his underneath. He would cry, he would hold it to his chest, he would hold it to his eyes, he would hold it to his forehead, he would cry in tears, always bathed by the tears of Mahaprabhu. And this Govardhan Shila was actually gifted to Arunathar Swami and his disciple, Ramana and Chakravarti, later, I mean, Vishwa Chakravarti Thakur, and then this was, that he also uh, kept here and he worshipped there. So these are the, uh, <coughs> then there is the Samadhi of Lopana Goswami, and there is Narutandas Thakur Samadhi, and also Vishwa Chakravarti. Narutandas Thakur actually melted away in the Padmari, while the disciples were waiting him, but his garland, his coping, and his um, needs are kept in the foot in the samadhi. So Narutandas Thakur's Pushka Samadhi is called. That is here. Yeah. So that is about this wonderful place. And there were three different temples actually. Even Jimmy that we had uh, this temple. And it was brought in one place and this was constructed by Vishwanath Chakrati Thakur here. Uh, Bhagavan Temple. And this is the place that we are here. Then from here we will be going to also Radha 
One day Lord Chaitanya appeared to him in a dream and actually told him and he went to Nepal and in the Gandhiji river when he was actually taking bath, uh, he put his lota inside to get and a lot of Shaligram Shilas came in that. But he put it back, he said, this is not just like how my wash, just put it back. He took a dip again, again those Shilas came. Again he put it back. Third time, again those 12 Shilas came. Now he said, well, looks like this is Krishna's design. So he brought those 12 Shilas and he would worship them. And one time, a very, uh, a very devoted, rich person came to the town to give, donate beautiful dresses for the deities. So, Govindji, Gopinath, and all that. Then he came to Radha. No, he came to uh, Gopal Bhattu Goswami. Gopal Bhattu Goswami, he said, Shalajaram Srila. What all can you put? He can put one mukut and one flute. But he was wanting to offer so many dresses and all this jewelry. So he said, you go and offer to the other deities. And that day was exceptional Chaturvashi. And he was reading how God Vashinya came from the pillar for satisfying Allah. And he was thinking, how nice it could be if you also appear in a way that I could serve. And uh, next day morning he went to take bath in the Yamuna. And when he came back, he had covered the Shadikram Shila and one Shila was like, shh, it would come bigger than that. You know, the cloth had come up like that. He was wondering. And he removed it and one of the Shila, Damodha Shila, that had grown into very beautiful form, the Banga form of Krishna. And Gopal Bhattu Goswami's joy knew no bounds. He said he ran to uh, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, he called and said, come, 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 just look at this. I just prayed. And such an instant reaction. You know, immediately there is a morning. Next day to Rashid Chatur Rashi Radha Raman Dev's appearance. So he was so happy and he brought and all the Goswamis came. And each one was saying, the Sanatan Goswami said, Oh, the feet of Radha Raman is exactly like Radha Raman. The Guru Dev, Rupa Goswami said, the face of Radha Raman is exactly like Radha Raman. The chest is exactly like Gopina. So that is the Rama Ramanji. You know, the, the, the self manifested form in reciprocation to the desire of uh, Gopal Bhattu Goswami to render devotional service. And thanks to him, his desire, 500 years down the line, all of us get an opportunity. Prabhupada told, Go oh, and see the kind of worship that is originally established as established by Radha uh, and Gopal uh, Goswami and his followers. The same thing is being carried out. That the uh, deity worship there is exactly the same as it was 450 500 years ago. They say the kitchen stove is still on. The original fire that was lit there is still going on. Then every nice one is walking. So we are, um, uh, since we are speaking about the deities, I just take some more time to finish that. Just a thought, since we are discussing about the deities, how our acharyas, all of us had their prana, their life and soul, which Krishna is very particular human form that had manifested, and how a whole community developed around those deities. So, as Mahendra Puri, one of the Lord revealed, Gopal revealed himself, and a whole festival
to the peace target and eventually all community develop about that. So similarly, following in that footsteps, Srila Prabhupada, wanting to give devotional service to Krishna to everyone, traveled all over and established deities where the devotees of the Lord pray that we please come in a form that we can serve you. As I said, when there is a deep desire in the heart of the devotee to do some service, that is the time Krishna appears. It's ultimately you know, reciprocation to the desire to serve. And in one particular purport, several purports to the deity worship, I kind of was trying to gather, especially whether it is individually for a grahasta at home or for a community uh, to invite a lord and the whole community keeping Krishna as a center. So, uh, how does it help individually or collectively a community or a family? I was thinking presence of deity at home uh, brings purity into the household. You are conscious that the Lord is present. I remember I visited one home in Mumbai and uh, the mother invited the Lord and you know was worshipping. Parents are devotees. And the children are the teenagers, they have a girlfriend in the world. And now this person is shifted abroad. It's I think, I don't know where exactly in the US. And the mother was saying, you know, they come very late, 2 30, they return, all that's fine. Prabhuji, I should tell you something. I said, what? She said, he calls me from there because wow. Well, my sister, her, his aunt happened to come from the U.S. to stay in their house in Mumbai, and she regularly smokes. So this boy, even though not only the devotee or chanting and all that, he called his mother and he said, "Mom, her auntie is coming. She smoked. Just tell her not to smoke inside the house." Let her go to the balcony, go to the roof. That was not good. And one was thinking, as if you are a pure devotee. <laughs> Just imagine, not that he borrowed all that thing, but he, that's the fact that the Lord is, because he had that little samskar of culture that he was serving the Lord, he was maintained. Even though he is in America, the heart is here. As soon as the heart is down here, she just won't tell her to go out. I said, just sleep a little bit. I said, yeah, that's amazing. Okay. So that's just that the fact that the deities are at home. You know, there is, you're conscious that he is supreme with your Paramam Pavitram. Pavitram Paramam Pava. And therefore, you want to keep it as pure as possible. At least think your items should not come into this house. Activity should not happen like this, at least within the house. So that is that's one thing. How the presence of the Lord in the household or in the community also brings unity. It is centered around his pleasure and his service. Just like Prabhupada said, you know, in a pond. If you put one stone, you know, ripples come. If you put ten stones, then they clash. But if you put it in the same spot, even though there are ripples, they don't clash against each other. So when our uh, individually or collectively, if our if our motive is to actually uh, keep Krishna in the center, his pleasure, his satisfaction, his desire, it brings a great uh, unifying, it acts as unifying factor, and it makes us peaceful. Also, it brings steadiness in the lives of devotees. 
that it is in whole or it is in, uh, in you know, unity. It brings steadiness because you know, service to the Lord is like a priority and it brings people in a mode of goodness and therefore that steadiness comes. And powerful uh, impressions for the next generation. It's powerful impression. I always tell this story. Uh, one of our devotees, uh, they had a son who was named, you know, about three or four year old, and I'm sorry, three or four, and third or fourth standard, which is like eight or nine year old boy. Now, they had Jagannath meetings at home, and the boy also wanted to have his own meetings, and they got meetings for him. So they put their deities there. He put his deities. And he would have everything that made it. Yeah, he also wanted. One little son, one little this, one little that. And then he would do it. He did all part. And one day, it seems the mother, she was working in the kitchen, and the father was out, the son was alone. And she suddenly here, slapping his son. And she was shocked. He's alone at home. So who's laughing home? <laughs> so she went inside and she saw that bathroom, washroom door was closed and you know inside one is clapping something. And she was shocked. She said, Mother Robeda, what what was wrong? And he opened the door and he raised his cheeks to her uh, really red. And she asked, what happened? small K Prabhupada. So because it was too close, the Chandra hit Prabhupada and Prabhupada's Murti fell down and the head separated from the trunk. He was so devastated and he said, I am responsible. So therefore he was punishing himself. So she said, no, no, it's all right. We will get you another baby. Don't worry, don't worry. So they kind of fixed up with some little call, things like that. Fix it up. And then Next Sunday, they went to the shop, in a big shop, and they got, um, you know, metal beam. Made sure that he doesn't make it. Because he couldn't do it, but still. And the surprising part, this was harder for me, is going. So, father wanted to get it. It's in children's play, so he, the, he took the Prabhupada baby and he placed it. And with the left hand, he took another Prabhupada and he said, okay, now we start with you. Yes, Papa, you don't know how to do things. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you keep this Prabhupada here and you request this Prabhupada. Now come here, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs>